Greetings, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you the BC Calculus 8.5 Part 2 Homework Solutions on Polar Functions, Slope, and Basic Area. On this problem, we're trying to figure out the area of R, which is bounded above by R equals 4 cosine of theta, so this is big R versus little r, and, and below we've got this theta equals 1 line. So we're using our formula, our area formula, of integral from a to b of 1 half r squared d theta, we need limits of integration on this one. So that's going to be, let's see, below we've got 1. That's our angle down here that we're starting at. And we're going from 1 to, well, this goes all the way back to 90 degrees here, so pi over 2. And what's the r on this one? It's going to be just this r that they gave us, um, so 4 cosine of theta. So we'll square that and take half of all that. And we're going to do that on the calculator, because this is a calculator problem. First thing I'm going to do to make my life a tiny bit easier, I'm going to put my r here as my y1. I guess I could use polar form, but I don't really need to for this. Uh, so quitting out of there, math 9, I need an integral. We're going from 1 to pi over 2. And in here I've got fancy fraction 1 half. And then we're going to use alpha trace y1, because that's where I stored the r here, so y1 squared. And then dx for all that comes out to about 0.465, which is going to give us choice B. For this problem, we want the area of the region enclosed by r equals sine of uh, 2 theta over the interval from 0 to pi over 2. So we, in general, need the area formula for polar area. Uh, that was the integral from a to b of 1 half r squared d theta. We need the a and the b, the inner limits of integration. So it looks like 0 to pi over 2 is going to be it, but we were allowed to use a calculator on this, so let's just double check that. So here I am in my y equals, but I've got this in polar mode, so it's actually r equals now. I've got sine of 2 theta. Uh, I've got my window from 0 to 2 pi. Let me just zoom 0 this thing and see what we're dealing with. So it looks like we've got a four-petaled rose, and they said they just want from 0 to pi over 2. Uh, so let me just do a little trace here. So we're starting at the pole, and as I increase my angle, it looks like I'm sweeping out everything between 0 and pi over 2. And when I get to pi over 2, which is about 1.57 and change, I've just got that first petal. Um, so that's the only area we really care about. So it looks like then we need the integral. It happens to be from 0 to pi over 2. And I'm going to have 1 half r squared, so they, they gave us the r, so that's going to be 1 half times sine squared of 2 theta. Let me just plug that in the calculator. So here's what that looks like on my calculator. I've got integral from 0 to pi over 2, 1 half, and when I did alpha trace to pull up my y equals, it's an r equals menu, and I stored sine of 2 theta as r1, so I can just square that, and I automatically get a theta when I press the variable button. Uh, so pressing enter then. We've got about 0.393, giving us which of these answer choices? Uh, well, definitely not A, B, or C. Uh, so it's either D or E. Let me see what's equivalent to that. So let's see. Pi over 8, is that the same? Yep, that's pi over 8. Okay, so choice D. For this problem, we want to know which of these expressions gives us the area enclosed by the loop of this graph, which is just r equals 4 cosine of 3 theta. So we need to figure out, uh, in general, area is going to be uh, integral from a to b of 1 half r squared d theta, but we need the limits of integration here. So to figure out what angle this is starting at and what angle this is ending at, I notice that I'm starting and ending at the pole, at the origin. So I want to basically figure out when this r, which tells me the distance from the origin, I want to figure out when this is 0. So I'll start by setting this equal to 0 and solving. So this is really cosine of 3 theta equals 0 if I divide by 4. And if I take inverse cosine, well, where on the unit circle is cosine equal to 0? That's going to be on the y-axis. Um, so we can say that cosine of 3 theta, or actually just 3 theta then, is going to have a value of pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and so on and so forth. And then if I divide by 3 to get theta by itself, this is now pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, 5 pi over 6. 
Um, so that gives us all these angles here. But now we only are interested in two of them. This first angle here, this upper limit in the first quadrant, that's most likely this pi over six that we just came up with. It definitely looks like 30 degrees. But how about this angle down here? Well, using symmetry, that's probably negative pi over six. But in order to, to be sure, we look at here, these are separated by a distance of pi over three, if you take a look at these. These are pi over three apart, um, right? Because you had, let's see, this is pi over six, 3 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. So if I want to go backwards from pi over 6, I just has, have to subtract pi over 3, and that does indeed give me the angle negative pi over 6. So my area then, we have an integral from, uh, this is the general formula, integral from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6 of, what's the r? Well, that's this 4 cosine of 3 theta that we're squaring in here and multiplying by 1 half. And, of course, that matches none of the answer choices. Um, so let's do a little cleaning up here. If I square the four and the cosine, this is really a 16 right here. Um, so that becomes an eight when I multiply it by one half. And inside I've just got cosine squared of three theta d theta. Does that match anything? So let's see here. Eight, that's uh, choices B, E, and C. We need the pi over sixes, so C is no good. And between these two, E is the only one where we have cosine being squared. So, E it is. For this no calculator problem, we're told that R is the region in the first quadrant bounded by the curves R equals theta, so little r equals theta, because we have a big R in here, and theta equals k. Uh, k is a constant between zero and pi over two. We want the area of big R in terms of k. All right, so it helps if you know uh, which function is which here. Pa uh, theta equals k, that's just a constant. That's just like a line going along one of these angle rays here, so that's this uh, straight line. R equals theta, you might recognize that as the spiral of Archimedes. This is just a small piece of that. Um, if not, well, it, it's, it's not R equals a constant, so it's gotta be the other thing, the curvy part. So using our area formula in general, for polar area, we have integral from A to B, one half R squared D theta. So we've gotta plug some things in here. A to B, those are our angles. So we're going from zero to, well, let's see here. This bounded region ends when we get to this straight line, which is swept out by this uh, theta equals k function. So we're only going from zero to k, not all the way to pi over two, which is a little bit misleading here. Um, they just told us that k was some number between zero and pi over two. It isn't necessarily all the way to pi over two, though. So we'll say from zero to k for our interval, and then we have one half r squared. Well, r, the, the r that counts here, that's actually doing the, the heavy lifting, is just r equals theta. So this is going to be one half theta squared d theta. So we actually have to express the area in terms of k. We're going to use the FTC to evaluate this. So just using my reverse power rule here, this bumps up to an exponent of 3. Dividing by that, I've got 1 over 6. Uh, and now we have, we're evaluating theta cubed from 0 to k. So that's 1 sixth times k cubed minus 0 cubed, or just 1 sixth k cubed or k cubed over 6, which gives us choice A. On this problem, we want to know the area of the region enclosed by this polar curve here. So for area, I'm immediately going to write down uh, integral from A to B of 1 half r squared d theta. And for this, I need to figure out, I've already got the r value, it's, they gave it to me right here. I just need to figure out my limits of integration. Uh, so let me go to the calculator and graph this out. So here I am on my grapher in r equals, because I've got this in polar mode so I can tell what this thing looks like. And I've got my window set from zero to two pi. Let me do a zoom fit, zoom zero. And there is our graph, it's a cardioid. So we're gonna use the trace function and see where this thing begins and where this thing ends. I have a strong suspicion this is going from zero to two pi to go all the way around once, but it never hurts to check. So we'll do trace, and it looks like we are indeed starting at zero. Trace will always start you at, at the lower end of your window. And then if we arrow over, 
it looks like our as our angle is growing, we're going around and around. All the way over here, we're at pi, which kind of makes sense. And then if we keep going here, that brings us eventually, we can't go anymore, that brings us back to 2 pi. So then we're going to have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 half times this thing squared. And let me just plug that in the calculator to see which answer choice I'm dealing with. So here's what this looks like on my calculator. Integral from 0 to 2 pi, we've got Francy fraction 1 half. And since I'm still in polar mode, here's my mode here, it says polar mode. Um, when I do alpha trace, it's going to pull up a menu of r equals instead of y equals. So I stored this in r1, and I've got a d theta. And this is going to come out to about 4.712. 4.712 would be equivalent to what? Well, uh, it's going to be somewhere between pi and 2 pi, right? Because pi is about 3.14, um, so incidentally, b is not the answer. 2 pi is about 6 and some change. So let me test out some things in between. So definitely not going to be 3 pi either then. Uh, so let me try out 3 pi over 4. So we've got 3 times pi over 4. That's 3. Let's try 4. Well, that's a little bit small. All right, let's try out 3 over 2 pi. So let me just go back up here, yank that input from before. We'll do 3 over 2. Ah, there it is. Okay, so that's choice C. On this problem, they're giving us the graph of this polar function here along the interval from 0 to pi. They just want the area of this bounded region here. Um, so using our general area formula, we have integral from A to B of 1 half r squared d theta. In this case, they gave us the a and the b. It's just 0 to pi from here all the way to here as we go around and plug things into this r function. And then uh, we just need the r value. Actually, they gave us r as well. So we're really just doing integral from 0 to pi of this thing squared times 1 half. Um, so let's go ahead then and just plug that in the calculator. To make things a tiny bit easier to deal with, I'm just going to put my r in as r1 in polar mode, or you could do this in, in function y equals mode, it doesn't really matter. And then setting up my integral, so I've got math 9 going from 0 to pi, and I'm going to be doing 1 half, let's try 1 half, there we go, fancy fraction, so 1 half, and pressed y by mistake, let's just delete that, we'll do alpha trace to get r1. We'll square that, we'll have a d theta, enter, comes out to about 17.456, which is choice D. For this problem, we want to know which integral gives the area of a region bounded by the graphs of, uh, let's see, we have a theta equals 0, so that's basically the, the x-axis to the right of the origin. Theta equals pi over 4, that's just a straight line going at 45 degrees and r equals all this stuff. All right, so we've got our general formula, uh, integral from a to b of 1 half r squared d theta. So for the a to b, I, th I think it's pretty clear here we're going from 0 to pi over 4. For the r squared, we have all this stuff squared with a 1 half outside. And that does not match any of the answer choices. Um, so here you have to be good at simplifying this. If we square all of this, we're going to end up with a 4 over all this stuff down here squared. But we already have a 1 half here. So uh, 1 half times the 4 there is just going to give us 2. But now all this stuff down here is still squared. Um, so that ends up being, let's see, answer choice C. Is there anything else that could be close? Doesn't look like it. So C it is. On this problem, they want the area enclosed by r equals theta sine 2 theta between 0 and 2 pi. So in general, we have the formula uh, integral from a to b of 1 half r squared d theta. In particular, limits of integration they gave us here, 0 to 2 pi. It's always nice when we get those. And then the r they also gave us. It's this thing right here that we're going to be squaring. So 1 half times this squared. Well, that doesn't quite match or doesn't match an answer choice. Well, let's see here. Uh, we're looking for a 1 half. We're looking for a theta sine 2 theta squared. We, we actually have that exact thing 
in choice C. So I think we're just going to pick that. Nice. On this calculator-based free response problem, we've got the polar curve defined as r theta equals theta cosine of theta along the interval from 0 to 3 pi over 2. And we've also been given the derivative of this thing, which, I mean, we could have found on our own using product rule, but they gave it to us. So no need to reinvent the wheel here. So we've got a figure showing the graph of r from 0 to 3 pi over 2. And we just want to find the region enclosed by the inner loop of this curve. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to graph this out on my own calculator, because why not? So right now I'm in polar mode. I went to mode and, and selected polar here, uh, just so I can get a good look. In my y equals, I've actually got an r equals of theta cosine of theta. And they want the interval from 0 to 3 pi over 2. So let me just go to window. And let me adjust this so that my theta max is going to be 3 pi over 2 rather than 2 pi. And now let me just do zoom 0, zoom fit, to see what this looks like. And it's exactly what they showed here. Now, the reason I did this on my grapher, um, other than it, it looks kind of cool, is I want to see as the angles increase from 0 to 3 pi over 2, when am I actually hitting that inner loop? Because this interval by itself is not going to be the interval we want to use to find the area. Our area formula is, let's see, integral from a to b of 1 half uh, r squared d theta. The a and the b, the limits of integration, these are going to be the times when we're hitting the pole in between the beginning and the end of this loop. Uh, so let me just do trace on here to see what happens as we increase our angle. So it looks like we start at the pole at theta equals 0. And as we keep going, the very first thing we do is we actually are going through that inner loop you can see. And then we hit the pole again at about 1.57 and some change. We'll, we'll be more precise in a minute. And then we start going along that outer loop. So we want to basically figure out what r equals or what the, uh, the angle equals when r is 0 the first and the second times. So in general, to show work, I'm going to set r of theta equal to 0. And to rigorously uh, calculate this, I'm actually going to graph this thing out in function mode, y equals mode, because that's what you need to do to find zeros. You can't actually find zeros in polar mode. Uh, so let me go back to my calculator now. And I'm going to change my mode to function. And now when I go to y equals, I'll just clear that stuff out. Uh, I'm going to put in x cosine of x. And honestly, while I'm at it, I'm also going to enter this derivative here. Um, although I'm not going to graph it this time around, but I've got a cosine of x and then minus x sine of x. I know I'm going to need it later on, so I might as well just put it in there now. Um, but let me deselect it for now because I don't really want to graph it in part A here. I want to graph this y1, though, and I want my window, again, to be from 0 to 3 pi over 2. Uh, so let me just make sure this is 3 pi over 2 for my x max. Zoom 0, zoom fit. And here is the graph that's going to tell us when r of theta equals 0. So we see that it's happening at two spots, three spots really. We begin at 0. We have this crossing right here. This is this r in here. This is the area essentially of that inner loop. And then we hit 0 again for the distance from 0 when we finally get all the way around at 3 pi over 2. Um, so I'm interested in this spot right here. Let me do a second trace 0. And let me just go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, enter one more time. And we have x, which is essentially theta, equals about 1.5708 if we round it off. Now, you might recognize this is actually the decimal version of pi over 2 which you could have got by setting this equal to 0 and, and solving, but that's a little bit hairy algebraically. Uh, we were allowed to use a grapher, so why not? So I'm actually going to let that equal q. So let's see, at x equals 0, r of theta equals 0, and I'm going to say at q equals that crazy decimal we just got. And on my calculator, I'm going to quit out of here, and I'm going to store that. As I mean, you can choose any letter you want, but I'm choosing Q. So now I can call that back whenever I want. 
Now to get the area of this inner loop, now that we've got our limits of integration, we're going to be doing integral from 0 to q, that's from here to here, of 1 half r squared d theta. Well, r in this case is this r up here. And they actually defined r of theta for us. So we don't have to rewrite this. We can just write r of theta in here. So we've got 1 half r of theta, that's this actual r function up here, squared. And now I just have to plug this in the calculator. So going back one more time, I've got math 9 from 0 to, we said q, so alpha q. And then I've got fancy fraction 1 half. And now I'm just going to do, uh, I've got this stored in my y1 as well. So alpha trace y1 squared. And then we'll do a dx. Should give us about 0.127. So there we go. For this non-calculator free response problem, we have the graph of the polar curve 1 minus 2 cosine of theta from 0 to pi given up here. And S is the shaded region in this third quadrant bounded by the curve in the x-axis. First thing we have to do is write an integral expression for the area of S. Well, in general, polar area, that's going to be integral from a to b of 1 half r squared d theta. We've already got the r value right here. It's 1 minus 2 cosine of theta. So you could plug that in and probably get a point more or less for free. But we need the limits of integration. So we need to figure out where this bounded region begins and where it ends. Uh, let me start by plugging in 0. Let me just plug in, yeah, 0 for the, the first endpoint and see what, what, what I get here. Uh, so if I plug 0 into r for theta, I have, let's see, 1 minus 2 times cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so this is 1 minus 2 then, which comes out to negative 1. So that means at the angle 0, I'm actually right here. So this is the starting point right here. And as the angles increase, this is going to keep going until we get to the origin here. So we need to figure out uh, the first time r equals 0. Our limits are going to be from where theta equals 0 to whenever r hits 0. So let me take my r expression and set it equal to 0 and solve. If I subtract 1, divide by negative 2, I have cosine equaling 1 half. Cosine equals 1 half at, let me think here, 60 degrees, pi over 3. Lots of other places too, but this is the first place that that happens, and so that's the place we're interested on for this problem. So we can write then our area is going to be the integral from 0 to pi over 3. And that's going to be of all this stuff in here. So 1 half times 1 minus 2 cosine of theta. And don't forget your d theta at the end.